Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Amir Karam, board certified facial plastic surgeon and founder and creator of KaramMD Skin. I specialize in facial rejuvenation, which basically means I help people look as young as they feel. And today we're gonna to go through a case study and journey of one of my very favorite patients. Her name is Gilda, she's from Italy. She's 49 years old. And she came to me with concerns that are very consistent with most people doesn't look like herself anymore, starting to become unrecognizable, doesn't look as young as she feels, looks tired, all the basic things that we hear. So let's take a look at her face and let's go through the analysis. And remember, the way I analyze a face always comes down to a very systematic approach. The face ages by changes in skin, volume, and sagging. And we're gonna look at all three of those areas independently and carefully to determine what are those changes are, and then we're gonna assign a treatment plan directly to them. All right, so let's start with skin. So as you can see in her case, her skin has the usual changes associated with aging. There's some sun damage, discoloration, uneven tone, a little bit of thinning, and a little bit of crepiness of the skin. Overall, good skin condition, but some normal wear and tear that happens with time. Now let's evaluate volume loss. When we look at her on the front view, what you can see is there's volume loss in the typical pattern that we see, which is loss around the upper eyelids, loss underneath the eyelids, loss in the temples, loss around the pre-jowl region, which is you know, right along the chin, and loss in the lips. These areas combined change the shape of the face to a little bit more gaunt and hollow look. Now let's take a look at the sagging components. Now the things in the face that can sag are gonna be the outer brows, the mid face, the jawline, and the neck. All of that starts to come down with aging and creates a face that looks more heavy down low, more or less like a rectangle as opposed to a youthful heart shape when the person is younger. And these are the changes we see in this case as well. They're very typical, very common changes that happen almost universally as a part of the aging process. Now when we look at her eyes very specifically, you see that she really doesn't have much upper eyelid skin excess, but there's a little bit of excess skin on the lower eyelids. Her lip length is actually in good position, so there's no need for a lip lift. All right, so here's the plan. When I analyze her face, this is what I come up with. For her skin, she doesn't need any lasers or chemical peel because the overall condition is good. I put her on KaramMD Trifecta to continue her skincare routine with sun protection before and after surgery. When it comes to her volume loss, I'm gonna perform a fat transfer and put a little bit of volume in all those different areas that we just talked about, but not so much at all that makes her face look full or, or heavy. I'm actually not gonna put any in her cheeks, just in the areas that I just described. And then to address the laxity in this portion of the face, I'm gonna perform a vertical restore, which is a deep plane technique that elevates the neck, the jawline, the mid face, and the lateral brow all at once puts it into a very youthful position and leaves the face looking rejuvenated. To her eyes, I'm not gonna treat her upper eyelids, but I am gonna treat her lower lids with a skin pinch. And as I mentioned before, she doesn't need an upper lip lift at all. All right, so let's take a look at her recovery. So a few notes about recovery. Patients really look their worst in the first three or four days after surgery where the swelling increases. And once you get to about seven days, swelling starts to go down very quickly after that point. But as the weeks and months go on, it just keeps getting better and better and better. But usually people, I always joke that they are at a position where they're not gonna scare small children at a grocery store by two weeks. And that's what we see in, in this case as well. This is the day 19 from my vertical restore. It's a little bit swollen here and overall here. But it's going better and better every day. And here there is a little um, bruise. Scars are not visible. I'm really amazing. Just a little here. I'm three weeks away from vertical restore and it's going very, very well. The scars are almost invisible and only here is a bit uh, swollen, but every day it's better.
In two months after vertical restore, I'm very happy because the result is uh, super natural. Uh, I only look more rested and um, younger, but natural. So thank you very much to Dr. Karam. Now let's take a look at her now that she's all healed up. So when you see her at different points in time, you can start to see how the facial shape has been restored back up into that youthful position. The touches of volume in the, all these critical areas has softened the overall appearance, not that hollow gaunt effect in those uh, areas around the eyes and the temples, etc. Lips look a little bit fuller and more vibrant. Her skin looks more luminous and more radiant. That's really, really important because skin and shape are the two components that make a person look younger or older. And when you put it all together, this is what you get. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed that uh, journey and taking a look at this analysis and the before and afters of the Vertical Restore Facial Rejuvenation. My goal with every patient is to leave them looking completely natural, like they haven't had any work done. That seems to be a consistent and very reliable outcome that we can always achieve given the techniques and the fact that this is literally all that I do and the outcomes speak for themselves. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions about any of this, drop them in the comments below. Share this with some friends and family. Let them know what is possible in the realm of uh, facial rejuvenation when, when the right techniques with the right um, combination of procedures are brought together, it's magic. And if you enjoyed it, hit like. If you are not following along with us, hit subscribe. We do tons of great uh, content that will empower you and put you in a position to, uh, to know a lot about the topics, um, both in our Skin School series as well as the, uh, the general facial rejuvenation information. And if you haven't already, make sure you follow and subscribe to the CaramMD Journal blog. We give tons of beautiful information that is easy to read and easy to digest and puts you in a position where you can learn as much as you possibly can. That's the key to making good decisions and staying out of trouble. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time.